For women, heights are normally distributed with a mean of 63.6 and a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. If samples of 49 women are selected at random from the population, would the average heights found for each sample be as varied as the individual measurements taken for each woman? This is a theory question, and what we want to look at is this phrase here. Would the average heights found, would the average heights found for each sample be as varied, as varied as the individual measurements? Well, let's say that the individual measurements, let's say that they vary by sigma, right? Sigma, let that be the standard deviation, a measurement of the variation in the data set. If the individual measurements have the um, standard deviation of sigma, the average heights would have the variation of sigma divided by the square root of n. In this case, since there are 49 women in the samples, we would have a comparison of sigma compared to sigma over the square root of 49, or in other words, 7. So what this is basically going to boil down to is you're comparing a value sigma versus a value divided by the same value divided by 7. Of course, if that's the case, if you're going to divide this value by 7, it'll become smaller, right? Like, for example, if you take 14 and then 14 divided by 7, 14 divided by 7 is going to be 2. It'll be certainly much smaller, which means that this guy always is larger if this n is greater than 1. And in this case, the n is 49. So we know that this measurement for individuals, that variation or standard deviation in this case, the standard deviation here is going to be greater than it is for the groups of women, right? And so what that basically tells us is that, you know, would it be as varied as individual measurements? No, 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 no. The average heights would be much less varied than the individual measurements. So if you looked at a list of heights for a group of women, there would be lots of variation. There'd be some tall women, some short women, some average women, et cetera, et cetera. And there might be big differences between the female heights. But when you looked at the groups of 49 women and you looked at the averages constructed for each group, so you have like maybe you had, you know, 10 groups of 49 women and for each group you have an average height, those averages would all be very close to one another. It's kind of like if you thought about test scores, you know, between two classes of mine that take exam two, their grades might be very similar, their average scores might be very similar. But their individual scores inside the classroom, right? So, you know, both classes may say score on average in the 70s on the exam. Maybe one class gets a 75, the other class gets a 73 or something. But when you look at the individual scores in the classes, the individual students would score very different from one another. Some might have hundreds, some might have Fs, you know, so there'd be lots of variation for the individuals. But between the classes, the averages for the classes would be very similar. So much less variation for the averages than you find for the individuals. And this relationship, this formula expresses that clearly. So keep in mind, again, as long as n is greater than 1, sigma is always greater than sigma divided by the square root of n.